Okay, so Dr. Pradeep is the Director of Preventive Cardiology and the Paul and Phyllis Fireman Endowed Chair in Vascular Medicine at the Massachusetts General Hospital. He is also the Associate Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Associate Member of the Broad Institute of Harvard and MIT. His research is focused on the genetic drivers of human atherosclerosis using genetic epidemiology, large-scale sequencing studies, digital health, and genotype-driven human investigation. Dr. Natarajan will be giving us a talk on the topic, hematopoietic mosaic chromosomal alterations and risk for severe COVID-19. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. Delightful to be with you all, at least virtually. Um, so th this is uh, relates to a paper um, that we had in Nature Medicine uh, just a number of months ago. And you might be asking, why, why is a cardiologist interested in blood cell alterations and infection? And all that may be seemingly distinct from uh, cardiovascular disease. And indeed it is. And I think um, understanding the root causes of uh, COVID-19 has been very important to all of us. And um, as you heard from the introduction, I'm a, a practicing clinical cardiologist. Uh, my wife is an ICU doctor. And so we were engaged in treating patients with COVID-19 um, fairly early on, one of the um, first waves in the United States was in New England and Massachusetts. Um, and so we were heavily engaged in, in clinical work and all of us throughout the world uh, were very interested in, in trying to apply our expertise in both on the clinical side and then also on the urgent research side uh, to better understand um, um, how to you know, understand this condition and how to treat it. Okay, so our lab um, is engaged in both the germline and uh, um, somatic genetic basis of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Uh, we, came, we became interested in this um, not too long ago uh, when it was appreciated that um, individuals who are asymptomatic, healthy, had no evidence of blood cancer, uh, commonly had blood cancer mutations that were expanded. These were detected by next generation sequencing of blood, typically whole exome sequencing that was generated to understand the heritable basis of a variety of other non-cancer conditions. And using other software to look at um, somatic mutations, it was found that about um, one in 10 individuals who was older than the age of 70, again, otherwise asymptomatic, had leukemia causing mutations that were expanded. So at least 2% of the blood had detectable mutations. And um, age was a principal determinant of the prevalence or the presence of, uh, of clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential or CHIP. Um, what brought me into the field was also a number of years ago, um, we found that the individuals were ch with CHIP, unsurprisingly, were associated with about a tenfold increased risk for blood cancer, um, but also were at about a twofold increased risk for coronary artery disease and fourfold increased risk for early onset myocardial infarction. And that these, um, even though smaller relative effects, because they're much more common conditions, actually have much larger absolute risks and were main drivers for why individuals were chip or were, were dying. And this is not detectable by any other um, clinical lab, uh, clinical test. We're not going to talk about this um, for this talk, but this has sort of been our principal interest in trying to understand the role of somatic mutations, non-oncologic disease. Um, but starting off in cardiovascular disease. Now, it's been previously appreciated that one can similarly use raw GWAS data from blood cells to also detect clonal hematopoiesis. And the type of clonal hematopoiesis that is detected from um, raw GWAS array data is, is different from what is detected from uh, um, next generation sequencing, which are so, so what I did, talked about for CHIP is just, um, you know, uh, point mutations or indels, pathogenic leukemia causing mutations. From arrays, these are larger structural variants um, because there's no next generation sequencing. You know, we can't find these rare cancer causing mutations, but can see um, differences in um, allele abundances to detect um, what are so-called mosaic chromosomal alterations. And these have also been described to increase risk for mortality. There have been several computational advances, largely led by Paul Rouleau, Julio Genovese, and Steve McCarroll um, at the Broad Institute um, to better scale the technologies in detecting mosaic chromosomal alterations um, 
And this is, you know, essentially free information from GWAS array data. All, all of us largely start from, you know, the Blink files and using our germline genetic analyses, but one can take a step back and use the, you know, the raw cell files, the intensity files. Um, and using, um, at least with Paul Rouleau's approach, is using um, phasing and overall haplotype imbalances to have much higher fidelity in the detection of mosaic chromosomal alteration events. Um, and they had a paper using the first release of the UK Biobank, 150,000 um, individuals to de um, detect um, a mosaic chromosomal alterations and then highlight at specific regions. And there's a diversity of different kinds that are detected. We became um, academically quite interested because um, these individuals were at higher risk for cancer, higher risk for death, similarly for what was observed with CHIP, but actually not at increased risk for cardiovascular disease. It became, so th this helped with the notion of, um, you know, is the relationship of clonal hematopoiesis to cardiovascular disease clonal hematopoiesis, uh, or is it related to the mutations, or could there be some reverse causation as well? Um, it was helpful, I think, for us to understand the specificity of the chip associated with cardiovascular disease to have a um, form of clonal hematopoiesis that is not linked to cardiovascular disease. We were very interested in trying to understand what are these individuals actually dying of. Um, so this was uh, basically the design of our study. We um, aggregated about um, 800,000 individuals together, as have been, um, you know, uh, other um, human genetic um, collaborations for COVID-19. This collaboration also spun up quite rapidly, which was, you know, somebody is highly engaged in collaborative science. Um, it was wonderful to work with, uh, um, you know, highly engaged, highly motivated collaborators um, for this. And we leveraged the infrastructure from the COVID-19 host uh, genetics consortium, where individuals were already come together with human genetic data. We had a sense of who had what phenotypes, especially as it related to COVID, um, and then who had the appropriate arrays, the, at least for the technology, the approach that we used were Illumina arrays. And then we focused our attention in um, running the algorithms to detect mosaic chromosomal alterations. Um, the relationship between um, mosaic chromosomal alterations with age was similar to what was previously described. That's the you know, top panel on the right. Um, there's obviously differences with uh, um, chromosome X and chromosome Y uh, mosaic alterations. That's where you see much greater relative prevalence in um, males versus females, um, but not as strikingly different when just looking at autosomal mosaic chromosome uh, alterations, but notably still some sex differences. And as has, you know, was described before in the more limited um, data set um, for the first release of the UK Biobank, we find different um, forms of mosaic chromosomal alterations. These are you know, gain and loss, and also copy, copy number um, loss of heterozygosity as well. So we found that um, these individuals, uh, was a little bit different from CHIP, had um, associations with different um, CBC indices. So um, the, the top is all individuals, um, sorry, all chro chromosomal alterations as the exposure. Here's autosomal here's chromosome Y and here's chromosome X. And we'll focus on the top with all mosaic chromosomal alterations. Um, individuals with MCAs had increased concentrations of white blood cells um, with increased concentrations of neutrophils, monocytes, um, and lymphocytes. So, you know, immunomodulatory cells. Um, and then really focusing on the autosomal aspect. Um, interestingly, um, you know, striking increases specifically in lymphocyte count. So when we look at um, associations with um, uh, diverse incident cancers, um, uh, we find that individuals are at increased risk for cancer, as was described before, but most notably, um, increased risk for lymphoid cancers. This is, um, you know, uh, different than what we observed with CHIP and, you know, we and others, is that CHIP is associated with an increased risk of myeloid cancers. So there, you know, that gave us some clue that maybe different cellular infractions were involved in this type of clonal hematopoiesis versus the other, and as such may have um, different phenotypic consequences that may relate to it out its outcomes. And similarly, as in the CHIP story, you know, it's obviously striking increased risk for cancer, blood cancer, but blood cancer is still not that common and so hard to invoke as the principal cause of death. 
But what we, um, you know, focused in on was infection because we know that things like um, CLL are potent risk factors for infection. And so we thought maybe like CHIP, which was, you know, a pre-AML, pre-MDS phenotype, a pre-CLL phenotype may be an important risk factor for infection. Um, so th these, uh, you know, just like the plot below are um, cellular fraction, meaning how much of the blood contains the mutation um, and incident rates um, for outcomes of interest. So here's for any infection, we aggregated the, here, we're, this, this plot is focusing on in the UK biobank, and then this is for sepsis. And we find a dose-dependent relationship between um, the amount of, uh, or the relative amount of blood that is affected with mosaic chromosomal alterations um, and incident rates of the outcomes. And then here, you can see it on the right panel, um, uh, essentially consistent associations across three data sets. So the UK Biobank in Europe and FinGen, which is in Finland, Northern Europe, and the Mass General Brigham Biobank, um, uh, which is our local biobank. So overall associations with um, uh, overall infections, particularly with more severe infections, so larger effect estimates uh, for, sep for things like sepsis and respiratory um, infections, but general consistency across infection types. Um, interestingly, we did find an interaction by cancer type. Um, those who had, uh, who developed cancer, so in the analysis, all individuals with known blood cancer were removed. Um, we just looked at individuals who did not have any known blood cancer. Um, over the course of development, uh, over the course of starting with the mosaic chromosomal alteration and mapping to, um, to infection, some individuals developed blood cancer, and obviously some individuals also had solid cancers as well, too. And we found an interaction that if you at some point developed a cancer before the infection, you had a greater risk. Uh, this was a greater risk factor for developing um, uh, uh, infection. But notably, there were actually individuals without cancer during this history who still had a greater incidence rate for developing severe infections. Um, we also found, um, for moving on, we also um, also looked at Biobank Japan, so another cohort in, in Europe that also had mosaic chromosomal alteration calls. Um, and we found that they also had a greater risk of sepsis death and pneumonia death. So that obviously turned our attention to what was, you know, most relevant um, in the public health space at the time was COVID-19. If we, you know, um, well appreciated, um, especially early on in the pandemic, that age is an important predictor um, for the risk of COVID-19 and severe COVID-19 um, uh, outcomes. Um, and so similarly to how we were trying to understand that CHIP, might CHIP be an important mediator of age as a cardiovascular disease risk? Could MCAs or mosaic chromosomal alterations be an important mediator of age and its relationship with um, infection risk? Um, so we specifically looked at COVID-19 as a, a hospitalization as the outcome. We found um, that individuals who were hospitalized for COVID-19 were enriched um, for the prevalence of mosaic chromosomal alterations. This is adjusting for chronologic age, um, sex, and then other risk factors like type 2 diabetes um, and ancestry. We find consistency in the UK Biobank and in Finland. Um, and then we went to um, the Columbia Uni University Biobank. So as you know, um, New York was hit the hardest and first in the United States. Um, so we got cases from that initial wave and we looked at COVID-19 severity across different stages and similarly found a dose response where mosaic chromosomal alterations were increasingly more prevalent among individuals who had more severe COVID-19 presentations. We did an analysis of the heritable basis of uh, mosaic chromosomal alterations um, <laughs> without spending too much time, um, found an enrichment of loci that were um, nearby genes that were implicated in uh, lymphocyte regulation, particularly CD4 um, positive T cell lymphocytes. Again, honing on the specificity of the cellular type that was implicated that might be driving these relationships. Um, so in conclusion, you know, MCAs we think represent a pre-CLL um, uh, condition and as such like CLL represent a risk factor for severe infections, but now a new un un unappreciated um, risk factor. Um, they're more frequent among individuals with more severe COVID-19 presentations. Um, 
So we think that you know genotyping could be helpful, um, especially that there are you know many expensive therapies out there, and if populations are trying to allocate resources to who might um, be at higher risk for developing severe COVID nineteen, knowing this information among others could be helpful. Um, obviously, boosters in the U.S. are are highly topical. Um, but important to recognize that vaccines are a limited resource globally. And so as we try to think responsibly whether people should get boosters and who should, um, this may be helpful in really finding the narrow population where that makes sense. Um, and overall, you know, just as a broader concept, we're very interested in this concept of the dynamic genome of the genome evolving through the life course and how that influences both oncologic and non-oncologic disease. Okay, lots of um, collaborators that made this happen, just highlighting the key folks, but you know, tremendous teams to pull this together. I mean, folks have listed here, um, and then these are the people in my lab. Okay, thanks, open for questions.